Hello and welcome to this edition of Wake Up and Live with the Arts. I'm Sue Johnson, your host, along with James McGilbray, videographer, and of course, uh, Absentia is Lester Bryant, our editor. But we want to welcome an encore guest here this evening by the name of Don Manorino, who was our first guest a while ago due to James's introduction. Uh, having crossed paths with Don a while back. And you are an, uh, what am I trying to say? You are a hypnotist par excellence. Thank you. I'll you, take the compliment. By all means, do. So you, uh, way back when we were here together the first time, you had a body of work that was beyond belief, and so some time has passed by. Tell us a little bit about what being a hypnotist is all about. You know, it's a fascinating field, no doubt about it. When mm -hmm. you stop and consider how many people you know personally, how many hypnotists do you know? There's not a lot of us. No. And I've been fortunate through the years to be the only hypnotist for the American Lung Association, okay. the American Heart Association, the Cleveland Clinic hospitals, university hospitals, and hospitals all around, and, and corporations, mm -hmm. especially when everybody was going smoke-free. Okay. So I've been specializing in hypnotherapy for, as to use your words before, more than a minute. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's probably to this point, I've hypnotized well over a half a million people. Oh, my word, and yes. I don't know if you remember, but I first discovered that I had this gift, and I do refer to it as a gift. Yes, it is. Because this is something extraordinary mm -hmm. that I discovered when I was in the seventh grade. Um, you know, I, I, I like to say that, you know, I don't know how to sing and dance, but I was given this gift, and I mm -hmm. protect it, and I use it for all the right reasons. It's a lot of power yeah. to be a hypnotist, mm -hmm. because what you're doing, the hypnotism that I know how to do is change the way a person thinks. So, for example, somebody comes to me, and they want to lose weight or stop smoking. I can use hypnosis to relax them, and then in that process, change the way they look at smoking, the way they look at overeating, and change it into a positive direction so they get back their self-control, their self-confidence, their self-discipline, mm -hmm. their self-esteem. And once you acquire that skill, there isn't anything that you cannot accomplish. Right. So since I've seen you, I was on staff for um, just a little less than two years at University Hospital in their okay. counterintegrative medicine network where I was fortunate to be able to hypnotize people who are dealing with chronic pain, like cancer pain, insomnia. Um, I specialize in seeing people for depression, anxiety of all natures, alcoholism, mm -hmm. drug abuse, kids who have ADD and ADHD. There's no end to the influence that hypnotism can have on an individual because, number one, it's very powerful, it's very positive, and it's an easy skill to learn. So, for example, I call it a skill. Hypnotism in many ways is like yoga, meditation, and biofeedback. It's a skill. But it's what you do with that skill, Sue, that counts the most. Yes. So I see a lot of professional as well as amateur athletes, and I teach them the skill of hypnosis so they can psych themselves up, so they can really get their performance to a high level. A form of auto-hypnosis? Yes, self-hypnosis, okay. it's called. Mm -hmm. Self-hypnosis. Through the years, it was called autogenic training. Okay. A number of different names. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the performance arts, I've seen a lot of people who suffer from stage anxiety or have memory issues where they're trying to memorize a script, but anxiety gets in the way and they're not able to recall it or retrieve it as mm -hmm. easy as they can once they learn the basic uh, tenets, so to speak, of hypnosis. Yeah. Because you really are dealing with the brain. Of course. And I, you know, it's, it's, you know, the answers that we look for, oftentimes we look into the environment for answers. But the answers are always inside the mind. It starts in the mind, it ends in the mind. So, like for example, people will come to me and go, you know, I've smoked for 50 years. It's like, well, you're the one that made the choice to smoke. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's got to change that choice. They don't know how, but I do. Okay. Now, I don't know how to, to conduct interviews like you do. Mm -hmm. That's your skill. Uh, James is a videographer. I don't know how to be a videographer. But you both could teach me the skills I would need to learn in order to be able to do that. So that's what I tell everybody. Relax about the hypnotism. Don't let the word itself throw you off because, you know, <laughs> through the years, we've all seen the movies. And let me teach you the art of self-control. Yes. 
Now, do you also work with those who, um, for better or for worse, you see, um, I watch a lot of Law and Order and that whole crime genre of stuff. Uh, do you work with those who uh, have to overcome childhood issues? Uh, uh, what is that? Memory loss, not mem re recalling memories right, of like past. Right, like age regression and things that like that kind to help of thing. them. Yeah. Um, you know, I was trained academically. I got my master's at John Carroll University, and then mm -hmm. I was a uh, student at the Gestalt Institute. Gestalt. So I learned Do Gestalt we still have psychotherapy. That here? I believe we do, and it's by the Music School Settlement, oh, I believe, okay. still down there. Mm -hmm. Probably not too far around uh, from where James is at during the day. Yeah. And so I believe strongly, you know, people will come to me and say, you know, I think something happened to me when I was a child, and I need you to hypnotize me and age regress me back there so I could relive it and therefore work through it. It's not that simple. Mm -hmm. And I, I caution people about this because Gestalt training says... Your childhood illuminates who and what you are today and what you do mm -hmm. today, but it really doesn't matter. It illuminates it, but it doesn't matter. What matters is where do you want to go from here, Sue? Yes. You know, and I can help you on that journey. So today begins a new positive journey in the right direction. So inevitably, you end up becoming a better version of yourself if that's your choice. Yes. And again, it's all positive in nature. You know, to just give you an idea... I tell people when they ask me this, I say, let's say that I hypnotize you back in time. We find out, and when you were five years old, your father threw you down the stairs. Does mm -hmm. that make you feel better or worse? It's going to make you feel worse because yes. now you know for a fact this is what happened. But it's really not that important. So when I hypnotize people, I always include suggestions of cleansing. So I, I give them suggestions, let go of the past and everything and everyone with it. Your life begins now, today. And it's all about choice. The universe tells us the most powerful form of energy is a positive thought. Yes. And the mechanism to control that energy is simply known as the mechanism of choice. I choose to do this. I choose mm -hmm. to do that. And I really firmly believe that the, the phrases, I can be successful, I will be successful, I am going to be successful, and then... The question is why? I'll tell you why, because I want to be successful. Mm -hmm. So you see how my voice changed, my appearance changed, because it's like I'm taking ownership. I can do this, I will do this, I am going to do this. Why? Because I want to. So I can't lose weight, I will lose weight, I can't stop drinking, I can't end my addiction to drugs, because I want to. Yeah. And then I can teach them how to fulfill that and how to implement the techniques of hypnosis, Whenever I hypnotize somebody, I always provide them now with an MP3 file of the session so they can reinforce Re it on their own mm -hmm. because the whole experience of hypnotism is sometimes better than sleep itself. And a lot of people don't sleep well. You know, they, they're tired. They go to sleep. Their mind is racing. By yes. the time they fall asleep, they're already exhausted. Then they wake up even more exhausted. <laughs> so I teach them, how about if you go to sleep, Sue, happy and relaxed? You sleep happy and relaxed, and you wake up happy and relaxed. It's like, what a concept. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yes. So it, everything that I do always has a positive focus, and I got that from, I've read two books my whole entire life. They're like the Bibles that I live by. I've read them over and over and over again. One is called The Magic of Believing by Claude Bristol. Okay. The other one, the most important author I've ever known was James Allen, philosopher, and he wrote that book, As a Man Thinketh. That's why I knew the name. I, that was one of my early metaphysical books. That's correct. Books. Absolutely. Yes. As He's a man thinking. Right. Yes. And he talks about, you know, the, the brain could be a garden of mm -hmm. beautiful thoughts or it could be full of weeds. Yes. And since you own the garden, you can transplant the weeds and put in positive seeds for growth and development. Mm -hmm. So he's really had a, an influence on my career, and I discovered him at a very young age. I did, too, um, way back in my early metaphysical studies mm -hmm. with all the various authors mm -hmm. and philosophers mm -hmm. and so forth. Now, let me ask you this. What is hypnotism not? It it's not a panacea. Mm -hmm. It's not something that I can do to somebody and force them or make them do something they do not want to do. Exactly. Um, 
so it's like if people come to me and they'll sit there and, and let's say they're coming in for anxiety and I'll say, do you have any questions? No, but I don't think you can hypnotize me. <laughs> so my, my response to that is always the same, whether it's for smoking, weight, drinking, drugs, whatever. It's, so your mind is strong. Yes, it is. So you have a strong mind. Yes, I do. Well, if your mind is so strong, what do you do? Go yeah. stop smoking on your own. <laughs> so once you get the humor to break up that, uh -huh. that fear, and then you say, so is your mind strong or is it stubborn? Okay. And inevitably, mm -hmm. it's stubborn. And then I'll say, well, then it's time to be stubborn enough to stop smoking, get your body healthy, get your mind healthy, you know, take care of yourself. So use whatever gifts you have in a positive way and you can achieve the, the goals that you want to achieve. Now, do you work your magic usually in one session uh, or a series of sessions or is it individual depending on the client? You know, I've done groups, Sue, for years yeah. when I was with the American Lung, American Heart. I, I did groups every single night, seven days a week, hundreds of people at a time. Mm -hmm. And success is always higher privately because people can ask you questions. They're not apt to ask you in a group. Yes. And you can pinpoint the hypnotism more directly. So when I see people privately... It's more of an intimate discussion, you know, and I'm governed under HIPAA, you know, just like other psychologists. Yes. yes. So um, there's a lot of sharing of information, and, and if they have any questions, you know, it's in an environment where they can feel free to ask. One thing I do want to mention is sometimes I always get this question, can anyone be hypnotized? It's my personal experience. I personally have never met anyone who could not learn the hypnotism the choice of words, yes. learn. Mm -hmm. Because as I mentioned earlier, it is a skill and everyone can learn a new skill. And I found that the more I tell people ahead of time before I hypnotize them, um, the easier it is for them to acquiesce into it, to let go. And I tell them, look, Sue, while I'm hypnotizing you, if you need to, open your eyes and look at me. I'm sitting right here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they need to know they're in control. For example, if I say, Sue, drop your shoulders. You drop your shoulders, right? It's not me doing it, it's you doing Do it. it. Yeah. I'm guiding you and directing you until I get access to the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is the power center of the brain. So we got three, three brains, right? We got the conscious mind that's hearing us now, yep. subconscious mind that people are picking up on nuances, on the change of my voice or rhythms, and then the unconscious mind, which is sleep. Mm -hmm. And for years, everybody thinks hypnotism is sleep. If you fall asleep, you will not hear the hypnotist. If you can't hear the hypnotist, how's it going to work? You don't smoke when you're sleeping. You don't overeat when you're sleeping. You don't drink when you're sleeping. You do these in a waking state. That is fascinating. You see what I mean? yeah. And once people understand, they go, oh, yeah, I never thought about that. And it's like, yeah. that's true. Oh, my goodness. So the more I educate them ahead of time before the actual experience is, it is. Because, you know... I'll tell you what, to go into when NASA was at its height, and it's about 20 years ago, I hypnotized about 400 and some people at once. Okay. I think the most I've ever done was 600 for Ford Motor Trucking Division in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and people go, how can you hypnotize that many people? Well, I say the same thing to everyone. My job is to make sure that nobody's moving, that everybody's experiencing correctly because I can see if anybody, you know, is, is not relaxed enough. And I can mm -hmm. pinpoint an individual in a group without the group knowing. I'm similar. I was, well, I guess I'm still similar. I'm not a hypnotist or, any, or a psychologist. I like to play psychology. I love that subject. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, I just, for, oh, no, I didn't. I just remembered. I tend to forget what I'm saying while I'm saying it. Okay. But um, for those who may not be... Um, well versed in hypnotism do you uh, use such words for example to help folks like guided imagery creative visualization or are those totally removed from the concept of hypnosis they're removed but they're related uh -huh. so if somebody while I'm explaining it to them is really nervous and I tell them, have you ever, I ask them, have you ever done yoga, meditation, mm -hmm. uh, biofeedback, uh, guided imagery, visualization, Reiki, anything of that nature, there's always relaxation in it. 
the relaxation of hypnosis is very similar, but it's faster. Okay. It's deeper. And the main reason is, let's take yoga. Uh, or let's take transcendental meditation. Oh, and I haven't heard that word. Yeah, remember? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Um. And, and the idea is to get empty and quiet and peaceful, but you always have invading thoughts coming in. So it's hard for people to... You know, if, if you're gonna if you're called on spontaneously to stand up in front of a room of five hundred people and give a speech, you don't have time to sit on the floor, do yoga, meditation, biofeedback <laughs> or anything else. You gotta do it. And yeah. that's cognitive, that's hypnosis. You can yeah. do it instantly with control. So I tell them, you know, when you relax and you're trying to push thought away, like in transcendental meditation, hypnotism is easier because it's the same physiological response, but it's active. My mind is strong. My body is strong. Every day in every way, I'm going to feel better and better, healthier and stronger. Emil Kue. Yes, you remember that. <laughs> yeah, that's every day in every way, I become better and yeah, better, that, healthier that and stronger, and positive. Yeah. <laughs> and these positive suggestions, it's like, you know, we look at the circumstances in our life. Mm -hmm. And if we stop and think, it's like, you know, how, do, how did I get into these circumstances? Well, they didn't just happen because we create our own circumstances. The good thing is, and everybody should know this, who we were, who we are, and who we wish to be is still available to us yes. at any given moment. If we go this way and it doesn't work out, change it and go that way. If that doesn't work out, change it and go that way. It doesn't have to be stagnant. And that's that, that constant flow mm -hmm. of letting your mind guide you. Because we all know what's good for us. We all know what we're doing and yeah. what we shouldn't be doing. Exactly. But oftentimes we do it anyway and then we wake up from a trance and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, thinking about that word trance, because that also goes with hypnosis. Let me yeah. just digress for a minute. A feeling of hypnosis for people watching us is when you drive in the car. You know, you're watching traffic, you're changing lanes, listening to the radio, talking on the phone. Before you know it, you're pulling in the driveway, but you don't remember how you how got you home. got there, yeah. But you didn't fall asleep or you'd have been in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. So where did you go? You went into a little daydream. Highway hypnosis. Women have been having their babies for years with hypnosis. It's called Lamaze. Yes. Now, my great-grandmother in Sicily did not have Lamaze, but she had her babies in a natural way because when you stop and think about hypnosis and Lamaze, the key in Lamaze is breathe in, breathe out, relax, no pain. Yeah. Breathe in, breathe out, relax, no pain. Mind over matter. There's only one way a woman can breathe. In, out. In, <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. So you got to just make it simple, make it easy. Another uh, description of hypnosis for athletes that psych themselves up, they get in the zone, they block out pain. Yes. Um, that's a form of hypnosis, mind over matter. Children. Uh, mommy, I can't. Wait a minute, honey. There's no such thing as can't. You can do anything you put your mind to, but mommy can't stop smoking. Mommy right. can't stop biting <laughs> her nails. Yeah. So we all know these things. But that word can't, won't, not, shouldn't, and ain't should be illegal. You would and think. It should all, and it should always be, I can, I will, I am, I want. Yes. That's how you control your destiny, to the thoughts you choose to think. <sighs> and that begins to build the law of attraction, that which yes. you want. I remember that because I used to do that with the Rosa Crucians or whatever. Yes, I used yes. to send away for that. Uh -huh. You know, when I was a little boy in comic books, you could send away for... Um, James probably sent away for certain things, but I sent away for hypnotism and ventriloquism. I thought it would okay. be a hoot. Uh, I was going to a Catholic grade school. I thought it would be great to throw my voice and throw the nuns off. You know, I'm Italian, <laughs> Sicilian, so what are you going to do? So um, it's, it's a small adapter that you have to balance inside, and, you know, at that age, you just don't have muscular control. So I got the hypnotism book. And, okay. you know, and then all of a sudden, it's like I've got this gift. It and it's, it, the first time I hypnotized somebody, instead of being frightened, I thought, this was wonderful. This was great. It was seventh grade. Her name was Sheila. Mm -hmm. It was in my mother's basement. I've told this story a million times. Uh, there were about 15 of us down there. Because a lot of you watching, you think back to when you had sleepovers and you'd have somebody lay on the ground. And you would say, stiff as a board, light as a feather. Stiff as a board, light as a feather. And you put your fingers underneath them. <clears throat> and you can lift them up and move them. Uh -huh. Or you light a candle and you rub the temples and you say, you know, your arms are drifting off in space, and, you know. So here we are in my mother's basement. I hypnotize this girl and I tell her when she wakes up, she won't know who she is. 
So I said, wake up. And I said, who are you? And she just sat there. And of course, we're all laughing. Uh -huh. And she just sat there. And she sat there. And she sat there. And it took about four hours to reverse what I did. And that's when I realized that I had something that nobody else had. Oh, wow. And, and I, I thank God for this. And sometimes when I go in, if uh -huh. I'm dealt with dealing with somebody who has severe cancer um, or really severe, severe anxiety, um, then I... I, you know, I'm, I'm Catholic, I'm Italian, Sicilian Catholic, I have no problem asking God or the Holy Spirit to work towards, through me to help these people help themselves. And that's the key. I, it's not me helping them, it's helping them to help themselves. And on that note, let us begin to thank Don Manorino of Hypnosis Expert Pod Excellence. We could sit here and chat until time time immemorial, immemorial yes that's what we could do but we are growing short on time so I am going to thank Don Manorino on behalf of James who introduced us several many years ago and Don for your private practice or your group sessions, how do people connect with you? Your I have phone, a, email, web, yes. whatever. <clears throat> I have a website, which is my name, Don Manorino. And we'll have that on the bottom of the screen. DonManorino.com. And my office number, even if you just want to call and ask me a question, is 216-831-6251. And if you Google Don Manorino, it'll come up. Of course. I get a lot of referrals from the medical community. I would imagine Lots. so. And um, you know what else? I know we're short on time, but and I'm in what they call in Sicilian a chachadon. That's a chatterbox. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you're right. We could talk for days. Uh -huh. um, is uh, I'm hypnotizing kids whose parents I hypnotized 30 years ago. Yes. That's and pretty I am, fascinating to I me. I am so glad you are because... We as a society, the masses, we, we, we don't use our brains properly. You're we don't so think, right. so right. quote, properly. Uh, if we were in control of who we are and, you know, who we want to be and mm -hmm. so forth, the world would be in such a better place. It sure would. But instead, we are like lemmings to the sea. We don't think. We're not creative in general, in general. Uh, and we just follow the masses mm -hmm. right on into the right. depths. Right. <laughs> you know. So hypnosis serves a tremendous societal and individual purpose. And there should be more of it. Now, just for clarification, you are or are not a psychologist in addition to... I have a master's in psychology, and I'm trained as a gestalt psychotherapist, okay. but I don't do any psychotherapy. I as only such. do clinical hypnotherapy. Uh-huh. Uh, and clinical hypnosis and medical hypnosis. So my, my practice is specifically hypnosis. That's what I, I feel that's my passion and that's my gift. So that's, that's the arena that I function in. And as Don said, if you have a question, if you're not sure about what hypnosis might be able to do for you or how to go about getting involved in the subject matter to help yourself, Give him a call. That was 216-831-6251. Okay, or email or go to his website so that you can avail yourself of his services. And he mentioned a while ago about performing artists. And that's what our show is about, is not only performing artists, but those who support the arts. And of course, Don comes from a family full of actors, singers, and dancers. But his work... If you're having trouble with your script, if you're having trouble with anything related to the play, its production, its aspects, hypnosis may be something to try. And above all, if you're working on cigarettes and alcohol and your weight, give Don a call. Till next time, this is Sue Johnson for Wake Up and Live with the Arts Every Day. <laughs>